Hello guys, welcome to my agriculture revision videos for you, uh, for your HSC. I know you'll be missing my voice already, I'm definitely missing you, so I hope this helps in some way to comfort you, but also get you over the line for the HSC. So, in these videos, or this one big video I'm hoping to make, uh, I'm going to concentrate on three things, what I call heavy hitters. So we discussed this uh, in the latter half of this term when we're talking about past paper questions. And these three areas are probably the most significant in terms of marks and questions that are most likely to be asked of you in your HSC. So it's fairly substantial, but we're only going to look at three things. So you might get asked more than this, that's okay. But um, my, my argument is if you can get to grips with these three topics, then you're giving yourself a really, really good shot at getting a good grade at HSC. So, number one is our product study. That's obviously beef. Number two is the integrated pest management, which we spoke about, and I'll go into more detail later. And the third one is our elective, which was the agri-food, fiber, and fuel techs. So I'll leave that till the end. So the way I would use these videos is, I'm gonna be going through things fairly quickly. There is a lot of text, that I will read um, off the PowerPoints, but feel free to pause, rewind, take notes. Maybe you wanna watch the whole video all the way through, that's cool, see where you're feeling, okay, I need to maybe study this a little bit more, or just pause it, take notes as if it's a normal lesson, but you can't shout out and give me abuse, which is, is nice for me. Okay, so, <laughs> by the end of this, you'll be strutting into your HSC um, like a suave cow. Okay, if you get these three things, you're gonna be, yeah, strutting in. Right, product study beef. So we have done this extensively this term. We looked at how do we turn a cow into a bit of meat that we can sell and all the steps in between. So I'm gonna briefly revisit that stuff just now. You'll be familiar with this because we looked at our uh, assessment task last term. We looked at all of the specific questions I asked you, um, looking at beef as your product study. So I'm gonna revisit some of these questions and maybe put them together, not quite in the order that we looked at in the, um, the assessment task, but it makes sense to me, hopefully, when I'm delivering it to you. Okay, so the first question I asked you was to describe in detail the market specifications for a named product. And something I asked you later on was, give an explanation of two major problems that producers may face that affect specific quality and quantity associated with the end product, which is, in our case, beef. So let's deal with the first question, market specs, first. So what are market specifications? Market specifications are the end users of stock, including feedlots and beef processors, which pay premiums for lines of cattle that fit these specifications while discounting those that do not. So in other words, if you meet your specifications, you get the maximum price for your cow, uh, your beef. If you don't and you try and sell it to that market, they're gonna ask you, or well, they're gonna give you a discount on that. They're not gonna pay you full price. So what are the main things that markets are looking for? One of them, but well, the most important is probably weight. So the weight of your animal, live or carcass, and I'll explain those detail, uh, definitions in a second as well. But that's probably the most important specification that most markets are looking for. It needs to be a, a specific weight. Then we have fat, which is usually in the P8 region of the cow, uh, or rib fat depth, if you're going that far as well. Uh, another major specification is sex, and another major specification is age. So these are the four main specifications that a market is gonna be looking at your beef and saying, okay, does it meet this spec? They may also look at other minor traits as well, like breed, meat color, fat color, fat distribution, pH, muscle score, that sort of thing. And I'll talk about a couple of those in a second as well. So when we talk about markets, I'm not just talking about the supermarket, Woolies or Coles, we're talking about markets that are gonna buy your beef. And that could be the local butcher, it could be a supermarket like Woolies or Coles, it could be the EU, like the European Union. So there's a whole bunch of different markets that exist that we've discussed, and each one of those markets requires a different market specification. So for example, in this graph here, if I was selling my meat to the butcher, 
the butcher is looking for 200 kilograms, okay? That's gonna get me a good price. And they're looking for a fat score of about two, between two and three. So if my cattle fit in this little box and I'm selling it to the butcher, I'm gonna get a good price. However, if my cattle are slightly heavier than this or slightly underweight, then the butcher is not gonna buy it at that, the full price. They're gonna discount it on me because I'm not actually within the realms of the specification, okay? I'm above and below it. Same with my fat content, okay? If my fat score was lower or higher than it needed to be, then the butcher could discount me because I haven't met the market specification. So, if I was selling it to the EU, for example, again, the butcher is looking for less weight than the EU, the EU are up here. So if I was selling to the EU and I had severely underweight cattle, then they're gonna discount me in that price, okay? And we talked about issues with that and financial pressures and we'll talk about it in a little second, but if you consider what's happening just now in the Central West with a drought, it makes it much more difficult if the natural conditions are highly variable, so they're not very predictable, in producing animals that are gonna meet that market specification. So we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So when we're talking about um, ideal quality foods or ideal quality beef in our case, we can look at this grid system, okay? So most of the beef um, is one you want to fall in these sort of Goldilocks conditions, I would say. You don't want your beef to be completely lean, so fat-free, but you don't want it to be just majority fat either, okay? So that's in the red zone. What you want is your meat to be in this sort of green zone here, and that is probably the best quality. You've got a little bit of fat on there, but it's not completely fatty, um, and this is what the market is looking for. And the same with the muscle, okay? You don't want something that's heavily muscled or lightly muscled. You're kind of more on heavily muscled scale, I guess, up here but you don't want your animal or your product to fall in these red zones. These red zones are where you're gonna be heavily discounted by the market you're trying to sell it to, or they might reject it flat out if they can't sell it themselves. So you really wanna be looking, paying attention to the sort of Goldilocks conditions here. What does your market want? And does your cattle meet the specific requirements? So you obviously need to look at your market way before um, you start raising your cattle to ensure that your beef can get to these these areas here, which are gonna make you the most money. Okay, market descriptions. So we've looked at a few um, in, in class. I'm not gonna look at all of them again, but I'm gonna look at some of the key ones that I think, if you can commit these to memory, um, practice writing some of these out, then it's gonna give you the best chance, I think, at HSC. So, got some fancy demo animation. Woo. Okay, so we're gonna look at weight, living and carcass, age slash dentition, sex, and pH, and feed type, sorry. Okay, weight. Beef cattle often need to be a certain weight for a specific market, and weight can be categorized two main ways. The live weight is the weight of the animal before slaughter, and the dressed weight. This is the weight of the carcass after removal of the head, limbs, hide, and offal. Okay, so the dressed weight is pretty much the product that we can use. The live weight is important. It tells us how heavy that animal is, but the dressed weight is what um, is the total kind of weight in kilograms of beef that we can sell. Okay, so live weight, that's kind of self-explanatory. Dressed weight is when the meat has been dressed or prepared, I guess, um, for exporting the meat or moving the beef into the next part of the production. Dentition. 